I'm good at hello. I'm not very good at goodbye, especially on the phone. I don't know what's happened. Every time I said goodbye, I sound like a fucking idiot. What is it? You sound like a child. You feel it coming when you're on the phone. It can be very serious conversations. Of course I'll be at the funeral. I've loved your father deeply. I'll say a few words. Bye! Why am I doing that? <laughs> you know the word hello was actually invented to give people something to say at the beginning of a phone conversation. The phone was invented and there was no word for hello. People would just pick up the phone and... I don't know, I don't know. There'd be someone on the other end going, I don't know, I don't know. So they gave them hello. It was either hello or ahoy. It could have been ahoy. <laughs> and despite the fact hello was invented for this one and only moment in time, people still, old people, insist on picking up the phone and saying their home number. Why are you doing that? <laughs> what a complete waste of time. <laughs> oh, sorry, seven, six, seven, nine, double four. <laughs> I know that. I've just dialed it. <laughs> the last thing I did on earth was dial those numbers. Do you open the front door and say your address? It's the same principle. <laughs> 15C Crescent Road, London N88AL. Oh, that's the phone! Oh, it's everything, ladies and gentlemen. So I've just celebrated uh, my anniversary. Um, four years married, yeah? <laughs> eight years together. You always have to add that. Eight years together. Eight years together. Eight years, four years. Eight years. <laughs> it's going very well. It's hard to write the card, though, isn't it? I mean, it's not that I love them more than anything, but it's very, at the beginning, it's very easy to write the card. You know, you do essays, big, long pages, I love you more than anything. Every time I breathe, I think of you, you've made my life complete. You're the love of my life, darling, darling. Please turn over the page. Please turn over. <laughs> just, just thinking about you now, and I fall in love for a millionth time. And it gets different. You have to come up with this shit every year. Last week I just wrote, I still love you. See last year's card for full details. <laughs> we, we've been together long enough for her to think, it's all right for her to say this to me. She says, I want to try this thing. I've seen it on the TV. It's just a bit of fun. I just want to try it. It's just a bit of fun. My friends have done it. I've done it. It's just for a laugh. Just for a laugh. Say, Will you agree? Like, I really don't know what you're talking about. Just say you'll do it. It's fun. I'm like, all right, fine. What is it? So brilliant. We can write a list. It's just a bit of fun. Of five people that we're allowed to have sex with from outside of the marriage. Like, are you, are you out of your mind? Are you serious? She's like, yeah, I've already done my list anyway. I'm like, okay, fine. I humoured her, so I, I compiled this list, and I just wanted to run her list by some of the girls here, because I felt it was very predictable, usual suspects, no real surprises. Uh, George Clooney was number one. How are we feeling about that? <laughs> Justin Timberlake, I believe, was on the list. Brad Pitt was on the list. Anyway, she's like, give me your list, give me your list. So I give her my list. Number one, your sister. <laughs> she's like, where are you going? I'm going to phone your sister. You didn't think this through at all. Why don't you try George Clooney's agent? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a, you're laughing on your own there. You've got to laugh. Everyone else is laughing. There's three and a half thousand people laughing at once, and you're going, ha ha ha, I'm going my own way with this. Sometimes people laugh and nothing comes out of their face. This is what upsets me the most. I look at them and I can tell they're laughing and enjoying themselves, but they're silent laughers. I don't need them here. Get out. <laughs> you only hear them when they need breath to fuel their shit non-laugh. You know what I love most is laugh snorting. It's very embarrassing for people. Because the snort doesn't integrate itself with the rest of the laughter. It waits till nobody else is laughing before popping up to give you maximum humiliation. So you'll be laughing, other people are laughing with you, you feel confident, you know how to laugh. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> you get lulled into a false sense of security. You forget you're a laugh snorter at all at this point. <laughs> as soon as it dies down to nothing. <laughs> oh. I actually double snorted the other day, like the beginning of the end. <laughs> Excuse myself, I'll never speak to any of you again. I do apologise. <laughs> it's just a malfunctioning. It's just the human body letting you know that you're human and at any moment you can malfunction and embarrass and humiliate yourself. 
Like the snot sneeze. You never know when that's going to strike either. <laughs> you can be in a run of sneezes. People quite like them. Achoo, bless you. Strangers come over. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Achoo, bless you. Thank you. Achoo, bless you. Thank you. And then for no reason at all, like, shit flies out everywhere. <laughs> I'm not blessing that. You should be ashamed of yourself. You, you try and laugh it off. <laughs> oh my god! It's a laugh, snot, snot, sneeze. I've completely malfunctioned. <laughs> I think the worst bodily malfunction, and people don't even know what it is. It happens about two or three times a year. Never more than that. I'm referring to the mini sick. What the fuck is that? <laughs> what is it? But no, there are no other symptoms. You're not ill in any way. It can just strike you down. Like, darling, I'm just popping into the kitchen. Can I get you a... <laughs> and you, you realise there's only one way. It's got to go back. It's got to go back. <sighs> and the shock of it means you need to share it with the nearest person, whether you know them or not. Excuse me. Just got sick in my face. I swallowed my own sick. How about that tea? <laughs> uh, <sharp> Unbelievable. <laughs> I got a little baby. I made him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't speak. He's too. He's a slow learner. <laughs> He's only got two words. It's embarrassing. Car and map. That's all he can say. Car, map, car, car, map. Two years old, he should have more by now. I'm slightly worried he's trying to escape. That's on my mind. <laughs> but his next word is passport. We're in serious trouble. <laughs> it's just embarrassing because girls, it, you, you find out about humans when you have a kid and you realise that girls are so much more advanced than boys. We're a mess compared to you. We're just idiots. We're idiots. And you see it. I went to this birthday party of a one-year-old girl. She's half his age. She's just in conversation. Do come in and take a seat over here. We've got a... <laughs> this entertainment did three health yourselves. I love your shoes. Are they baby gap? Ka, ka, ma, ka, 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 I really think that girls are born in conversation. I think they just pop out of the womb going, are you my mother? Lovely to put a name to a face. You, nurse, weigh me, get it over with. <laughs> it's the best it's ever going to be. Seven pounds, one, it's downhill from here. <laughs> he can walk though, which is good. I'm trying to teach him, I've got the book, you probably remember the book. A for apple, B for ball, C for cat, D for dog. X, always my favourite, for xylophone. <laughs> I love the way when you're growing up, it's one of the first things you learn in the world, xylophones. One of the 26 most important things. <laughs> this is a xylophone, they're two years old. Here's a xylophone. You will never need a xylophone player in your life. But here's a xylophone. The only word invented to give me something to say when I get to X in the alphabet, good luck. And then all, this, all these words associated, apple ball, cat, dog, all this nonsense get changed because you get older, you get more mature and you think I can't use that. I'm an adult now, I've got an adult brain. Suddenly we deal with Alpha, Bravo, Tango, Foxtrot, Delta, yeah, Echo, Zulus. <laughs> but no, nobody bothers to learn it. Unless you're in the police force, you don't have access to this information when you need it. So I'll be on the phone giving my postcode, like it's N10. They go, is that M for Mike? You go, no, that's N for... And then you forget every word beginning with N. <laughs> in the world. It should be quite an easy question. N for... I do know this. Darling, any word, knickers. I panicked, I panicked. And they end up thinking of the weirdest word ever. A word you think, I can't use this, can I use this? It's all I've got. I'm going, nougat. It's all I've got, nougat. N for nougat, sir. Yes, nougat. It's all I've got, nougat. Thank you. And filth. It's amazing how much filth you have in your head. You find this out at this moment. I'll go S. They go, is that F for Foxtrot? No, S for uh, slut. Slag. Suck, slut. Squirt. Squirt. Sex scrotum. Ah! Supervisor! Fine. We'll use yours. Thanks for bailing me out. 
<laughs> Sometimes I like to throw them a curveball for my own entertainment. G for gnome. <laughs> this is how you walk, by the way. My son's got it now. With your legs, I say, yeah, baby. It's just the arms get involved, isn't that odd? Your arms do this. Your legs are doing most of the work, but your arms think, I'm going to do something. I don't want to just sit here. Because <laughs> it looks odd if you don't use it. This is odd, isn't it? This is odd. <laughs> Although this is quite good in you saving energy in your arms. Just a little bit. But it just hasn't caught on. I mean, wh why do we just conform to one way of walking? Well, I've realised if you use the same amount of energy with the natural arm swing, but go together, <laughs> you actually propel yourself. <laughs> I'm moving twice as fast as the average walker. I'm doing this now. People are walking normally. I go flying past. <laughs> They're like, what are you doing? I'm winning. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> And I'm also, I've also felt, as I'm sure everyone in this room has as well, that skipping, although socially unacceptable <laughs> for anyone above the age of six, is actually a remarkably easy way of moving. <laughs> We've all thought this. You put hardly any effort at all, then you just start moving around very easily. Because running is difficult, it's very heavy, but skipping is magnificent! <laughs> so what I'm doing now, by combining the two... <laughs> Woohoo! I'm practically flying! <laughs> so the winter's drawing in, it's over, the summer was over, we never even had a summer, it was so depressing. Nothing happened, except there was a lot of rain, a lot of rain, a great deal of rain. More rain ever since records began. Yes. Not that we have any idea what that means. <laughs> there was this strange period in history with no records at all. People would leave their homes and go, it feels slightly different to yesterday. Is anybody writing this down? <laughs> and then after a period of time, somebody said, enough, enough, I will write this down. <laughs> I would like to announce that records have begun. That first day must have been quite a record-breaking day, don't you think? It's the hottest, wettest, windiest day since records began! This morning, I've only just doubted. I think it's about the wind as well, on the weather. Who cares about the wind? Could it be a stiff northeasterly breeze? I'm not sailing to work. I don't give a shit. <laughs> People see that and go, I'll leave slightly later with a tailwind. I'll be there in half the time. Woohoo! Then the clocks are going to change. Nobody knows when the clocks are going to change. They change on a Saturday night. Nobody knows it's going to happen. Everybody the same every Saturday night, every year. They don't know which way or what's going on. You only find out about it late on Saturday night. You overhear somebody. Excuse me, what was that? The clocks, they change. When? Tonight? <gasps> Darling, the clocks, they... Which way? Which way? Which way? <laughs> they go back. Is that the good one? Is that the good one? <laughs> How many years do we need to be alive before we know when they change and which way? An extra hour! Woohoo! The only thing we can look forward to, ladies and gentlemen, in this winter is snow. It's the only thing that gets us through, because the weather's terrible, but snow is the holy grail. Nothing beats snow. And normally, we get one day. One day of snow. And you've got to hope that it snows overnight, so you can be snowed in. <laughs> Earlier this year, it snowed in the middle of the day. You don't want that. I was waiting for my bus, and where, when I, where I live, there's no tube. You have to wait for the bus. The buses actually originate there. The bus is already there. So the, it's even more frustrating. I'm waiting for the driver. We've got everything we need. <laughs> We're looking for people. Can you drive this thing? <laughs> and that's when the snow came. Amazing, instantly landing snow. The best of snow. I mean, the most unbelievable snow. And then I realised, oh my God, I could get snowed out. This is not what I need. <laughs> The driver shows up <laughs> and he says, ladies and gentlemen, I regret to inform you, due to the chaos on the roads, it's been snowing eight seconds at this point. <laughs> we're cancelling the bus, there will be no running of this service. And we're like, well, hang on a minute, we bought our tickets, what are we going to do? How are we supposed to get home? There's nowhere to get home, what are we going to do? And he said, don't shout at me, I actually live at the other end of this bus route. I take this bus home and then I'm relieved by another driver. And we're like, well, this is a very interesting development. How are you going to get home? There's only one thing to do, walk. It's the only way we can get home. It's the only way at all. 
I'm like, fine, okay. So we walked the bus route, led by the driver. <laughs> We came to the first stop. We had to tell the people waiting, there's no bus. And they joined our imaginary bus. <laughs> it was getting bigger and bigger. I looked behind us, I could see the next imaginary bus. Not a bus, just people walking. And it was catching up fast, because no one to pick up from the stops. And the driver saw this as well, and he turned around. He said, when we get to the next stop, don't tell them anything. Keep walking, they can get on the next one. <laughs> It's one of the funniest things that ever happened to me. I said to the woman walking next to me, I said, this is hilarious. We're on an imaginary bus. There's a driver. There are old people walking. And this is funny, right? And I thought we were on the same wavelength. But now I remember I was doing most of the talking because she said, I'd love to chat, but this is my stop. <laughs> she got out of an actual bus stop and then walked in the direction we had just come from. 